finding that miracle in this position? Yeah, honestly, I don't see him really finding this miracle at all. Let's not forget, he needs to win this game. He doesn't only need a draw, which would be difficult to achieve already. He needs to win. He's currently a pawn down. He has the worst pawn structure with these double pawns. He has no counterplay except for this b3 idea, which is really difficult to achieve. And it's also black's move. And Magnus can play queen b4, can play queen b3. Yes, I <laughs> just want to say that he played it. I, I, am I right? Yes, he played queen b3. And you're not getting b3 in. The queens are about to be traded. You don't have any counterplay along the f-file because all the entry squares are covered. Your bishops are not doing anything. Black is controlling more space. You get it. We don't see, I don't see any comeback here for up to the turf. His only hope is the clock situation with only 16 minutes for the remaining 20 moves. But with this position being so solid, so secure for Magnus, I'm really struggling to see any way for for up to the turf to, to post questions. I guess he needs to keep the queens on the board, play a move like queen d4, but now your idea, Tanya, might appear with bishop h6, quite fancy, going for this pawn on e3, so what cannot take the rook, because if the bishop takes e3 check, you lose the queen, so you would need to defend against this, maybe going bishop f4, all right, well, we can trade here, we can bring the rook wow. back, and where do you even play with why? Where, where do you even play? It's all completely locked up. The bishop is doing a fantastic job. Yes, it's not an active piece, but it's defending the pawn, it's defending the entry square, and there's just no way for Abdus Zatuf to create any well, play. Well, he has played rook fc1 voluntarily resignating to the queen trade, yeah, which he's in a must win situation. It's, it's kind of capitulation, no? Yeah. Yes. There's really. Not much more to say. I think Magnus is going to take this one pretty easily. Maybe up to the turf is even going to offer a draw because he knows he's not going to win this game against Magnus. Yeah. He's down a pawn, going into an endgame with Queen Trail, and Magnus happily obliges. Queen takes Queen. He picks up with the B pawn. Well, at least for now, the B file has been opened up. Uh, you control any d4 advances. Of course, Magnus still in full control, full driver's seat, and Magnus needs only a draw in this one. Uh, Peter, we are talking about where's the miracle for Nordebeck. The only chance I see is on the clock. Magnus at a little less than 15 minutes, 18 moves to make, but now with the queens off the board, it shouldn't be a big factor. No, not at all. The only reason why Black could spend some time is how do I win the game? How do I win the position? But if you just, okay, you follow it up with rook b8, you trade one more rooks. Uh, basically, as long as you don't move that bishop from e6, yeah, because that would allow e6, yeah, that would be the only way of ever blundering something, yeah? So if, yeah, he opts for h4, there was uh, nothing else. Making sure that against bishop h6, there will be g4, g5 idea. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, that's the point behind the move h4. But let's just enjoy this uh, this lovely bishop on e6. Yeah, this is the essence of the position. As long as it's there, it logs out white's bishop on h2, the only dangerous piece which can cause some trouble. Let me highlight one line, yeah? So if black plays rook b8, white plays a move like king g2 or bishop d1, okay, it, it makes sense. Then if you would move that bishop, bishop d7, e6 check, white wins, yeah, that's... That's what I'm saying, yeah, that be careful, this is the only thing, as long as you don't move that bishop, nothing can happen to you. The one trick in the position. To me, uh, Magnus's journey in this freestyle chess go challenge so far, it's giving me major deja vu from the World Cup, Peter. But, you know, Magnus starts, he starts a bit slow, the positions are a bit shaky, goes on to play Winston, I think it was in round three, loses the first game. That was the closest he got to being knocked out of the World Cup. Uh, I think the only game that he lost throughout then, yes. finally, eventually. But then, Vincent had a chance in the second game as well to keep things under control. But once Magnus got that match victory in, he was unstoppable, unbeatable. 
let's fast forward to Freestyle Chasco Talent. In the round robin, Magnus shaky. He doesn't manage to win many positions. He himself said that he wasn't finding his rhythm, making a lot of misses. Then he goes on and he plays against Ali Reza, loses the first game. He loses the first game. Ali Reza needs only a draw to bounce back. But then Magnus Carlsen comes back in beast form on the second day takes the win, takes the win in the tie breaks, takes the win in the 15 plus 10. And his match against Nordebeck, counting yesterday's game and this one, he's just, he's back. Magnus is back on top form. And that just makes him a very scary Magnus for everyone else. Yes, he grooved into freestyle chess completely. Yeah, he, he got the rhythm. Yeah, white plays rook b5. After rook c6, we have also seen Nordebeck's face told it all. Yeah, said it all that... Yes, I'm not going to have chances here. As you, you know exactly, yeah, Magnus followed it up with rook b6, rook cb1, will be played, there is nothing else to be played, and now black can even play the move rook a b8. Can't he? Yeah, he can play rook a b8. <laughs> Basically, it, it, it almost... All the rooks. Yes, it almost forces resignation in the sense that after rook a b8, rook takes b5 is such a threat, and uh, how do you, Magnus even takes... Okay. And yeah, even if you take with the A-pawn, the Black King would be perfectly placed in front of that pawn and the A-pawn starts moving forward. So for Nordebeck, it was key to start to take with the Rook. Doesn't really happen. I liked your move Rook B8 because it would not give White the time to take on A5. While now, Magnus is reaching out for the King. He steps up King to C6. Yeah, but the point was that after Rook A-B8, there was Rook C5 check. Mm. And anyway, White can... Okay, Black doesn't mind it, but why to give up a pawn? Let's just uh, quickly show this, because this is quite instructive. That after Rook A-B8, seemingly everything is uh, pinned along the B-file. Nothing can move, because then uh, the Rook behind will be hanging. But there was this Rook C5 check. And then King moves, then you take on B6, you take... You take the pawn on a5. Anyway, it's scary for white because black is the one who is invading with the rook yeah, to b2, can't. or you can even give a check and then pin the bishop. It's uh, it's also not a good scenario. But Magnus thought like, okay, why to do this? I'm just enjoying. I'm pawn up. I'm sitting here, and by the way, my opponent needs to win this game. Yeah. And I don't I don't see how that's going to be a reality in this. Position. Yeah, but look at this. Yeah.